video will explain unsupervised data augmentation for consistency training. One result that I found to be really interesting from this paper is that their technique achieves a 2.7% error rate which is online with state-of-the-art results in CIFAR-10 with only 4,000 out of the 50,000 training samples. This is a really interesting result for anyone interested in semi-supervised learning or anyone who has a limited labeled data set and wants to make use of the vast troves of unlabeled data that you can get from sources like Instagram or Google Images and what have you. And there's also some other really interesting results like uh, text sentiment classification and the image net classification. So this is the architectural design of their paper. And this portion over here is the uh, novel component to it. So what they do is they have their unlabeled data and they pass it through the same classifier that is classifying the labeled data. And the idea is that they want the predictions of the unlabeled data to align with the predictions of the same unlabeled data after going through data augmentations. So this is the key idea, is this unsupervised consistency loss. This would be an example of a uh, Y label distribution prediction given an augmented sample compared to the original unlabeled data point. So the idea is you penalize this term, the KL divergence, which is a distance measure used to compare uh, like distributions like this. You know, you want to compare the distribution so you minimize this KL divergence between the sample after it's been augmented and before it's been augmented. So this makes up the unsupervised data augmentation loss, which is combined with the regular cross entropy loss in this uh, overall cost function for the model. So these are the augmentations, the unsupervised data augmentation component. So this back translation is an augmentation technique used in text data sets that I thought is really interesting. What they do is they take a sentence like, given the low budget and production limitations, this movie is very good, and they translate it into French, and then they translate it back to English. And going from uh, English to French back to English produces these slight variants that uh, are a different phrasing but capture the same like semantic content. And so I thought that was a really interesting text augmentation that I hadn't uh, read about before this paper. And then uh, in image augmentation, I've covered this a lot, and uh, it's like things like where you take these croissant images and you rotate it, translate it, zoom in, do all these uh, image manipulations so that you can get more information out of the data. And this has been used in unsupervised and self-supervised representation learning for a long time. And it's like a part of every computer vision pipeline that is achieves uh, good results. So then they also test with uh, the TFIDF term frequency inverse, inverse document frequency augmentation. And this is just where they basically replace words with uh, low TFIDF scores. So another idea that they present is this training signal annealing. And I thought this was pretty interesting too because this idea uh, definitely generalizes for all uh, semi-supervised learning and learning with limited labeled data. So the idea is that when they give uh, the model a training sample in the SGD training batch, if the model is really confident about its prediction, meaning that it like is, it says uh, cat 98%, uh, you wouldn't train on that sample because Otherwise, you would overfit on these examples that it's already confident on. And then they, so this table on the bottom left shows um, different techniques of uh, changing that threshold. This, um, see the confidence uh, of the prediction, if it's less than this threshold, you don't train on it. So these are different techniques for changing the threshold throughout training. And these, and they actually have a pretty wide variance with uh, the exponential schedule performing poorly and the linear schedule performing slightly better than not scheduling it at all. So another thing they talk about is sharpening their predictions. So when they have, when they're taking these unlabeled data samples and they're predicting a class label, a lot of the times it has no idea what it's looking at. And so it basically says 20% uh, cat, 20% dog, 20% airplane, 20% frog. And this is really bad for this idea of aligning the prediction with the data before it's been augmented and after it's been augmented. So they present these uh, three techniques for basically uh, skewing the distribution such that it's not like uniform and things like uh, softmax temperature controlling. Like a softmax uh, function is something that you pass through a distribution such that the probability is summed to one and it's like the exponential of the prediction over the sum of all exponentials. So what this does, the softmax, is it already it will skew it towards the uh, more, like uh, higher outputs. Like if you have 
0.4 and 0.38 before it goes through the softmax. The softmax is going to increase the distance between those two points. So what they do with softmax temperature controlling is they're going to uh, increase the distance between those points even further with this uh, temperature parameter. So then they also talk about data filtering and this idea of the unlabeled data points uh, could be like really out of distribution. Like let's say you have a medical image data set and, uh, and then your unlabeled data set contains things like flowers and birds and all sorts of random things. You might use this to try to align the data. And the way that they do that is um, they pre-train the model and the labels that they do have. And it only keeps the the data that the pre-trained model has a high confidence, and we've defined high confidence as meaning that it that, you know it's predicting one class basically, and not just like a uniform distribution of classes. So it only keeps the samples from the unlabeled data set that have a high confidence defined in this way. So these are the results, and this is really interesting. With only four thousand out of the fifty thousand uh, CFAR ten training images, they achieve this. Uh, you know, near the same accuracy using the unsupervised data augmentation. And you see that they uh, are basically on par with supervised learning. And then they, they do are outperformed by auto augment, which is like a uh, reinforcement learning technique for data augmentations for supervised learning. And that still does outperform uh, the UDA technique on all the data. So then here's some more really interesting results. Uh, the top chart shows how this performs on ImageNet when you only have 10% of the labels. So the supervised technique on the top means you just uh, train the ImageNet model with the 10% label data. And then the much higher 68.66% and 88.5 top 5 accuracy is when you do this unsupervised data augmentation technique where you take the 10% of the label data and then the 90% of unlabeled data and learn the representations through this technique. So then on the bottom, they're kind of showing how this technique might scale. And so the way that they do this is uh, they take 1.3 million additional images from their JFT data set. And it's kind of interesting to think about if they had used all 300 million from the JFT or if they had used like the Facebook, Instagram, weekly supervised or something like that. I'm not sure, but there's definitely, you see already that it's ahead of uh, auto augment by almost a full percent on top one accuracy. And it's much higher than supervised learning alone in uh, both metrics. So again, this is the image augmentations. They use this auto augment algorithm to construct these augmentations, which they compare the uh, predicted class distributions of. So they also test cropping and flipping, which actually, uh, this one on the top, uh, performs uh, surprisingly poorly. And then, so cutout is where you uh, crop out a random patch. And uh, I'm actually not sure what switch document means. So then here are the results on the text sentiment classification where they do that uh, back translation technique for the augmentation. And so they're able to get pretty interesting results using only uh, 20 samples from the IMDB uh, movie review sentiment classification. So thanks for watching this video on unsupervised data augmentation. The paper link is provided in the description. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning videos.